Hello viewers, this is Jay Kerf and um, I'm going to share with you today a wonderful recipe um, I've been able to take from my mother. It's an eggplant and lamb casserole. You'll find when you're cooking casseroles to try and um, limit the amount of main ingredients because of the sauce's strength. You need to really concentrate and bring out the flavours of the two main ingredients which are the eggplants and the lamb which always work so well together. First and foremost, as I do almost every week, I'm just going to, I like to mix, mix vegetables inside the sink on occasion or just use it to wash, take some lambs out. I use the four quarter chop, I, I, I love this chop for barbecues as well, it's got a high degree of, uh, of fat within the, within the red meat as you can see and it, it really brings out a lot of flavour. And I like to keep the bone in for this for this particular dish. I think nearly every culture in the world has a saying that basically means meat is tastiest on the bone. I know the Turkish people do, and I know the English people do. Okay. Now the lamb's all diced, ready to go. Um, I'm, I'm going to work on the eggplant now. Um, what's rather important with the eggplant, and it's always important keep your rubbish at bay when you're cooking. There's nothing worse than the kitchen looking like a hurricane hit it when you finish cooking. I've often said the most important ingredient for a good meal is a clean kitchen while you're eating it. I mean even if you can't see the kitchen, just the knowledge that it's there and it's just dirty and you've got you know, a laborious task after a wonderful meal to clean it can ruin any meal. I haven't seen a cooking show expressed that before, but for me it is the most important ingredient. If you're wondering what I'm doing now, it's another little trick I learned from my mother. I just like to take sections of the peel away. This serves for many reasons. It serves in flavour as well, and it also helps to keep the pieces more rigid or stronger as you gently stir it. As you know, when you cook egg pan, it becomes rather soft. So we're going to keep these pieces rather large. And uh, they do shrink a little in, in the stove. So we'll prepare the eggplant now. And as I said before, the, uh, the eggplant will absorb a lot of oil if you cook it with oil. So let's cook it beforehand. And um, also you may want to cut in different angles. The effect of that is actually increasing the surface area. Yeah. And an increase in surface area means more area can hold sauce when you're when you're eating it. And also, um, now I'm going to just quickly do the onions. You should also, when you're chopping the onions, not be not too meticulous in getting them all the same size. I mean, the reality is when you're cooking it, even if it's not a casserole, but when you're cooking it, um, the thinner pieces will tend to infuse or dissolve whereas the larger pieces serve wonderfully as a, as a texture to the meal so there's no need to be meticulous when chopping it so just chop it because there's so much surface area in a wok you can actually literally apply heat to more food at any one given time so it really it's just the versatility above everything else it really helps a lot so what we do all the ingredients are ready and that way timing it is just a matter of timing it and not chopping something, oh no, I'm not gonna make it, and then take it off the stove and do this and do that. This works out much, much better that way. As, as you remember earlier, I've totally sterilized the sink with boiling hot water. I do so much love to um, mix spices inside a large, large sink. That's red pepper I'm adding. It's probably the equivalent to about two tablespoons for if you notice, there's about five steaks of um, lamb pork orders. Probably three tablespoons if you, if, you, if, you, if you do like it. We have some coriander seed, freshly ground. Um, you can get the ready ground ones, but um, with coriander seed particularly, it's very important because it's very aromatic to, um, to, grind, to grind it yourself. And last, a little bit of cumin. This does, you, I mean, obviously you can grind this yourself too, but this cumin is, is, is good and it retains a lot of aroma very, very well. So, just mix that all together. 
together. And the rule of thumb, I don't know, I've been cooking for many, many years and um, I look at cooking shows and um, I generally add about five times the amount of salt they prescribe. I don't know why, but um, no one's ever complained of my food being too salty. But when I see a cooking show, there was one small pinch of salt. I don't know how they get all the flavor out using salt when it's like that, but it doesn't work for me. I like to add a nice little dose of salt. Now we're going to go to the stove. As I said before, I love cooking with a wok. And this is the pot we're going to put it into. And then we'll put the sauce in there. And that way when you cook them separately, then you um, cook the sauce separately as well. And so you put them all together and then you just let them simmer together. And that way there's less stirring that needs to be done and less damage and bruising to the wonderful eggplant. So we've got that now. If you like to cook or or fry even with um, olive oil, as many people do, because the flavor is spectacular. You wouldn't notice, like in the last 10 years, the world realizes that it's not good for frying. But there's a peculiarity about oils, in that when you, whenever you mix two, you generally increase their burning temperature. Okay. Onions and lamb to go. We'll add them. I'll do that at a time just to make sure it doesn't sweat and it, it, it browns nicely and evenly. The oil is ready to go. Let's cook some lamb. And remember, you just want to seal it again, and you know, and brown it. You don't really need to cook it through. The um, the simmering in the in the pot will, will take care of cooking it cooking it through. So of course, yeah, all in good timing. The lamb is almost cooked. Not cooked, but perfectly brown and sealed. Put it into our pot. And now for the eggplant. Now I did make, I did tell you twice that the eggplant shouldn't be cooked in oil. There's obviously a little residual oil in there, but that's just wonderful flavor. And it's not, you know, an inordinate amount of oil that it will be sucking up, weighing it down and making it mushy. So, okay, the eggplant's in here. Again, wonderful. We've got the wok. We can toss. We don't have to stir. I mean, we may have one with the fork over the chopsticks, but that wok, we've got to hand it to the Asians. Invaluable. Chop them in half. Another thing I noticed many even professional chefs don't do, and it saves me a lot of time, I chop on an angle, if you can notice, just on the on one side of the um, of that point there, and that way I don't have to isolate it twice. Okay, they're good. The eggplants are perfect almost. Okay, now it's a lamb dish and I've opted for chicken stock. Um, beef can be overwhelming, especially if um, you, you haven't used that stock before and you don't know exactly how good it is. So just chicken stock to get the sauce on the way. And the tomatoes. One can of tin tomatoes now, diced. Um, what you can do is also um, just use a very, very basic Italian sauce that you'll find in any supermarket. Um, instead of adding too many uh, tin tomatoes and, and, and herbs and spices to, um, to 
skin that is pretty cool to serve around it, it really does save you a lot of time and you really won't notice the difference in taste if you make it fresh not, not easily. Nonetheless, okay so we've got the casserole cooking. I'll bring the camera over here shortly just so you can see that. Now I've made a large amount because my sister who is um, doesn't live too far away from me loves this as well and it's a kind gesture to her. I'm gonna make her a little bit but she likes more spice in it so for her it's the red paprika alternative well not alternative but addition I'm gonna add some red cayenne pepper to spice it up for her and that will be one of her favorite dishes of all actually. So um, one of the last ingredients to add before we let it simmer and cook um, is tomato paste. What I find this is great for is it gives that tanginess but also um, with the bolognese sauce as well for example if you find you've got puddles of oil or something this seems to be able to um, dissolve it and, uh, and remove those puddles of oil but obviously you've got to put it in soon enough that it doesn't overwhelm the flavour because obviously tomato paste is not a, a wonderful flavour unless cooked through but it also gives it the richest red colour Okay, there we have it, the tomato paste is in. It's simmering nicely, the color is turning a nice deep red. We'll give it a few more minutes of just lightly boiling. In total about five minutes of boiling. You've got to bring it to the boil, of course, which takes a while. And then we'll, we can simmer for up to an hour. Okay, I've separated the two, one with the cayenne pepper addition, the hot and spicy one for my sister, one for me and my little family over here, and on with the cleaning. Now another little point, you're probably going to get sick of hearing it, but I can't stress how, how much it improves the whole process. It makes cooking a joy and cleaning once again. And what we're doing here is straight off the stove. And so you think I'm doing more cleaning, but in actual fact I end up doing less because this which is already perfectly clean would have taken me much longer later when it had a dry. And the cleaning's finished. We have a clean kitchen, wine, a little bit of jazz. Hey darling, how are you going? Okay, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you enjoyed the meal more so. That is the wonderful, I suppose, Turkish inspired lamb and eggplant casserole. One serving suggestion, I suppose, watermelon or red grapes with the meal. And of course, don't forget, fresh, beautiful bread. Cheers and bon appetit. And also, before I go, down there, you'll find the full recipe in text should you want to undertake it. Thank you.